Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Adir Islamic brothers and viewers of Madni Channel, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we join again in tonight with Madni Channel. And today's topic is a very, very important one. But before we start, there are many blessings of reciting through the Pak of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just imagine seeing your place in Jannah before you departed from this world. And what if somebody said that I could give you a Madni pearl, which if you acted upon, then you would see your place before you left this world. With that in mind, listen to this beautiful hadith in Mubarakah. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that whoever recites through their park upon me 1,000 times a day will not die until he sees his place in Jannah. Subhanallah. Maybe it will take 12 minutes a day, but you can guarantee that before you depart from this world, not only through the blessings of Guru Depak, but you'll be granted Jannah, but you will see your place also. Sallu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, dear viewers of Madhi today the topic is a very special one because it's close to our hearts. We're born with certain qualities in this world, and as we grow, our characters take a shape or form. Now, all around the world, character is very important. And the world recognizes that. And everybody tries to gain a character which is high and moral. And Islam gives us the highest and the best moral character. And Nabi Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blessed this world with the greatest of character that anybody could have. And the amazing character of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed the world how we should truly behave. And one of the fundamental things that Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us was not to live a life of selfishness. To rise above your surroundings, to be bigger, to have a broader thought. Today, unfortunately, we are all affected by a disease. And that disease is a very simple one. And it goes a little like this. Me, my family, my home, my car, my children, my respect, my dignity. In the morning it's me, in the afternoon it's me, in the evening it's me. I'm the best. I don't care about others. My brothers and sisters don't matter. My parents don't matter. Life revolves around me having everything I want, and that's it. And we live a life of total selfishness. Nobility, great character, caring, love, generosity, have unfortunately disappeared from our society. And our life evolves around my desires and me being important. So today, I've got our Havasab here, and we're going to take some Madni pearls from Hafizab on this very important topic because we are duty bound through our lives to reform our character to please Allah and His beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to please our inner self, our nafs and we started this journey and some of us, even when we recognized it we didn't get far down the path but the bitter irony is and the disappointment is that a lot of us, we didn't even look at this as a journey of the character. Allah Akbar. Hafsab, uh, welcome to the Sisla tonight with Madhu <coughs> Shalom. 
a, a very important topic and uh, mashallah you were the one who chose this beautiful topic as well may Allah Azza reward you um, it, it, it's a very very important topic and before I ask you why what made you choose this um, I want you also to answer that question but also tell us that why it is so important in Islam that we don't be selfish. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairun bihi. Mashallah azawajal. You know why I chose this topic is because we see in quite a lot of this in our community today. You know, if you look at the seerat, the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He didn't live for himself, he lived for his people. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi This is what we uh, hear from Amir al Sunnat, Ghamay Ummat. Ghame Ummat means that you have that gham, that, that love for the Ummat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha has seen the race that uh, one night the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was with me. And late at night, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stood up and he stood for Salah. And I could see the blessed tears flowing from the eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and falling to his blessed beard. And when he finished his Salah, I said, Ya Rasulullah, may my parents be sacrificed on you. Why were you crying? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Oh Aisha, the thought of my Ummah was making me cry. Allah. What's going to happen to them on the Day of Judgment, the Pul Sirat? Now if you look at it, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the time, he would worry about their Ummah, he would, he would always cry for the Ummah, he would make dua for his Ummah. And you know, today, if we look at our lives today, we worry about ourselves. When we make dua, we got to make dua for ourselves. We, we, we forget about our families, our parents. You know, that's what you call selfishness. Now this is in ibadat where we are being selfish in ibadat. Halakhe in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala, He mentions that, you know, they make dua and I will accept your prayers. And also, you know, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life, the life of the Sahaba Ikram, we need to think about other people as well. Rad, at this moment of time, it's all about me. It's all about me, you know, it's, uh, I've got to have this, I've got to do this, you know, I've got to look beautiful, I've got to be talking best. So it's nothing about other people. Halakhi, the Sahaba Ikram, they used to be about other people. Are, are, we, are we really slaves of our nafs then? How we started to totally ignore the world around us. And, you know, if, if I'm happy, say you're suffering, mm. but if I'm happy, I've got everything, then I'm not bothered about you. Why don't I care about you anymore? You know, society in, in general was all about brotherhood, Islamic mm. society. You look at the lives of the Sahaba Ikram, you know, they cared about each other to the extent that they gave others that which they needed. Mm. Today, why am I not willing to give you what I don't even need? You know, even, even if it's something spare, I'd rather it go to waste than give it to you. Why? Um, the glorious Quran again, uh, verse 128, Surah Nisa, translation from Kanzaliman, and the heart is trapped in greed. Isn't that the essence of it? That basically, my desires, my greed, I can't fulfill it, so why should I be thinking about you? If I've got 10 pairs of shoes and 15 pairs of jackets, yeah, and I, you know, that isn't enough. If somebody's walking along without a jacket or without any shoes, why should I donate to them? Because my heart's saying I've not got enough. Why is it though, when we know that we can't take that with us? So the, the thing is, yeah, okay, if we say that, okay, because I need it for my, the where, the where you get the reward, where you get the thawab, is when you give your beloved thing, what you like for yourself, you give it to other people. You know, have we not heard of that beautiful waqiyah of Hasnain Karim and Sayyidah Fatima, Hazrat Ali Radhiallahu they were fasting, and they, they had very little food to eat, and as they were sat down to open their fast they heard they heard a knock on the door and what happened was a, it was a it was a traveler and he says I've been traveling I don't have food please give me something to eat so whatever they had cooked at home they gave everything to that traveler now this happened three <coughs> times Allah. they could have thought to themselves they are saying we just got this food for ourselves is enough for our own family why how can we feed it to others yet they had their priority of, uh, of themselves over the other people as well so they thought that no these people have come to us let's 
feed them, Allah will feed us. And what happened, Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, this is why, you know, when we talk about the Ahlul Bayt, Allah Ta'ala, He mentions them in the Quran, <laughs> the Fazail of the Ahl Bayt. You know, it's not that, you know, we, why we love and respect the Ahl Bayt, is because if you look at their waqiyas, their stories, they used to think of other people better than them. <laughs> they used to think other people were more precious than them. Alaki, we know how precious they were really themselves. So it's not only, obviously, the, the fact that they were close to Nabi Akim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were family, but Allah, Allah Azawajal had granted them and gifted them with a great high moral Subhan character Allah. as well. Yeah. You know, I was up, this greed and this wealth, it, it totally destroys us from the inside. And it takes away the peace and tranquility. And there's a, a very, very famous hadith in Mubarakah in Sunan Tirmizi Shiv, where Nabi Akim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and I'll read the exact words, Two hungry wolves, when set free in a flock of she-goats, do not cause as much harm as the greed of wealth and status causes to one's deep. So, so it completely destroys your deen because you are totally immersed in making money, in gaining a status. And you know, with social media these days, I mean, the, 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 the problem that people have, the depression comes from after that, you know, you put something on and then they're constantly checking it to see how many likes it's got, how viral it's gone. And if they don't get that many likes, then they get upset. And if they get a few more and then they read the comments and our life seems to be dominated by what others think of us, you know, the other how others perceive us. And gosh, you know, when are we going to think that others' perception of us isn't important? It's what Allah and His Habib sallallahu alayhi wa You know, there's a story, Harun Bay, I mentioned it a few times. Uh, there was this uh, French photographer, he won the best photography, the best photo uh, of the year. And he was going to get in, but he wasn't there to take it because he was dead. How did he die? Now the photo that he took was of a, of a young orphan child in Ethiopia. <coughs> and this child was crawling towards the camps to get some food. And there was a vulture waiting to pounce and take this child away. Now when this vulture came towards and you know grabbed the child in his paws, this guy took a photo of that. Yeah, he took a photo of that and that photo became the best photo of the year. He got awards, he got a prize and everything, but he wasn't there to collect that prize. Later on, he thought to himself that I was so selfish to take the best photo, I could have saved that child. Allah. I could have saved that child and I didn't. I was so selfish and he committed suicide. You know, and the thing is, if we look at our lives today, you know, we can help so many people, our own family members, you know, to stand on their own two feet, start up little businesses. But what we're worried about is, no, Agar, if I help them, they might take over but, me. But, Hamza, that, that's the next stage. But I think that the way that unfortunately society has crumbled at the moment is that, we, for, you know, you're talking about a stage where you go out and you help your relatives financially or give them time. At the moment, we are at a stage, unfortunately, where I'm not prepared to say, Salaam Alaikum, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not prepared to greet others. I don't have time for others. Uh, my time is very precious to me because I can earn more money. I can do things for myself. I can do things for my family. And we don't think outside to the extent that I haven't got time. If my sister's not well or my sister's upset or my sister's got a problem, I don't have time. When was the last time? A lot of people watching, a lot of views of Madni channel. When was the last time we went along to our brother or our sister and said, okay, Baji, is everything okay? Mm. You don't need anything, do you? you know, I just come, I'll just come around to, to just check up on you. Just to make sure everything, how happy would our sister or our, uh, you know, our relatives be, our brother be, uh, if we said that, that uh, no other reason. But the thing is, today we do go to our friends' houses. You know why? Because there's, there's something that I want in return from him. Exactly. Yeah. Wobi so, matlab ke yeah, matlab hai. I said, you don't want to go. But the thing is, like you said, man, beautifully, we don't get time. You know, when we were younger, our father, our <coughs> mothers, they used to take us to our parents' house. We used to go to Birmingham, here, Bradford, Leeds, spend the whole day, stay over at our friend. It doesn't happen anymore. Why? Because, <coughs> you know, uh, for number one is parents don't have time. We've got aunties, aunts, uncles, brothers, relatives. We've got full khandan, but we've never been to each other's houses. Why? It's because don't get time. You know, I've just come back from work. I'm really tired at home. So our kids don't even know what, you know, you know there's that a is mindset our relative. Of that if I was to turn up to my relatives regularly, you know, it some way lessens me. But in the eyes of Allah and His beloved Habib, it raises you, especially our bazurk. 
Now, you know, like grandparents, yeah. how happy did they come? I had the honor and the privilege of visiting my grandparents yesterday, and we sat there with my children. And I was, you know, I brought so much happiness to them just by being there. Yeah. And you know, it was, uh, and even when uh, you know I, I was thinking of getting up, they didn't want me to get up. They wanted me to stay there. And I thought simply that. But let me ask you this: you mentioned you know, one relationship there that I want to kind of just dwell upon. If I, you needed help, and I spent a full day helping you, say you needed to repair your home or you need to do something to your car, all day, I'm stood for you in the rain, getting wet, in the cold, and I help you all day, yes? And then at the end of the day, your problem's fixed, and then I say to you, can you give me one minute? I need your help. And if you turned around and said, no, I haven't got time. How bad is that? Just as an example, look at your parents. They spend their life for you. And today, unfortunately, we're talking about other relatives. When it comes to our parents, who selflessly, you know, they didn't have any greed. You know, mm. they didn't think of anything. They thought of you before everything else. And today, we even think of ourselves before our parents. And when it comes to time, we haven't got time for our parents. When it comes to our wealth, well, my money is my money. When it comes to greed and everything else, you know, my property is my property. And it just baffles you that the parents who spent their entire lives, you know, looking after you, you can't even give time to them. Yet today, you know, most parents... They don't want your money. All they need is, you know, at the end of the day, if you went to your parents for 19 minutes a day, half them, and just said, you know, I've come to see you, Amiji, Abaji, how happy would they be? Subhanallah. How happy would they be? They'll be over the moon in it, And for once, what you've done is you haven't been selfish. You haven't thought about yourself. You've thought about their feelings. Yeah. And this is the problem. We don't think about others' feelings. There's no, you know, what, uh, today, nowadays, mercy uh, is gone, hasn't uh, it? Nowadays, what it is, yeah, we'll go to our parents, we'll go to our brothers, but what for, for, for what reason? Chalo, as Rila Gija said, they'll think I've just been. So that's like, again being selfish because you want to go only because you want to put your name down. That you want to get the ticket, yeah. guys, you know? So, you know, if you, like, you <coughs> mentioned about parents, Alhamdulillah, mothers, fathers, their love is, you know, there's no strings tied to it, you know. If you ask any parent nowadays, you're a parent, I'm a parent as well. If someone asks you, well, why are you working so hard? I'm working for my children. So it's not mine. So our fathers, our mothers, if you ask them, what's this for? It's for my children. But when, it's your ch when your children get something, my house, my car, my... Some, so everything is mine. You know, is it, I I in Islam, there's a... You know, this beautiful waqia that a person he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complains about his father that my dad whatever money I give him he spends that money and he doesn't even tell me so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calls his father I'm gonna cut it down sure so at the end when the father cries in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Rasulullah ask him where did I spend this money on his aunties on his grandparents on his mother on my family I didn't waste that money so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being Rahmatullahi Alameen he grabbed hold of the son and he says you and your money belong to your father Allah, Allah, Allah. so what we say you know mere paise, my car my this my house if your parents are alive they are yours but they are your parents as well that is why you can't give zakat to your mom and dad why because you, that money belongs to your parents but again it's greed isn't it I mean if the two people in the whole of the world that your life should evolve around um, you know you feel in your heart um, that you cannot give them, or you cannot see them, or you cannot give them time and your money and wealth. There's a disease in your heart, isn't there? Mm. Because it was, a, you know, the example I gave, where I help you all day and you won't give me one minute. Well, that's what we're doing, aren't we? Gee. That person right there, as soon as your car, say, you know, we're on a motorway and I come out to help you, and you then get in your car, I've helped you all day to get it ready, and you drive off leaving me there. That's what the children do when they neglect their parents at this age. Because the, this is the age that they need your care and attention and generosity. And they are more deserving of some than anybody else in the world. Now, how do you define success? How do we define success of some? Who's successful? Go on, some of that. You know, give me an example. You know, uh, if, What's if, success? If, if I give you a, a unpar, you know, a, 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 a very the worldly, it, yeah, worldly, a worldly example. example. We look at people with money, with cars, with big house, with fame, with a name. 
with a good social account, with millions of followers, we think, yeah, these guys are successful. But the same question was posed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, who is a loser? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says on the day of judgment, a person who comes with good deeds and everything is wasted, people take his deeds away and he's going to be thrown into fire because of the sins of other people. You know, so if you look, if you look at it that way, you know, Alhamdulillah, we think that these things are successful. They're not, these things are not, you know, the, 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 the definition of success. The definition of success, according to the scholars, is someone who leaves this world with their Iman is successful. Let me give you the definition that is written in Surah Hashir verse 9. Translation from Kanzul Iman. And whoever is saved from the greed of his soul, it is they who are the successful. SubhanAllah. So the greed of the soul, basically, on all these things, it's just greed, isn't it? And it never kind of fulfills. Whether it's money, we're never content. And whether it's, you know, respect in the eyes of the people, we're never content. You know, we're never happy. We want more and more and more. And it's one of these vicious circles that eventually, you know, we think the world evolves around us. Well, there was a beautiful uh, message that was going around once, and uh, you may have seen it, where it said that Kabristan aise logon se bhara para hai, jo samajhte the ki dunia mere bhagar chali nahi sakti. Because the graveyards are full of people who thought that the world can't get on without me. And the reality is that after a few days, people forget and move on. Yeah. And you know, the, the people who are the most closest to you, and this is the, this is the, the bitter kind of uh, irony of it, that you know, the people who care about you, you know, today we don't care about them because of our greed, we ignore, you know, in the greed of wealth. You know, one person said to me, I says, I do, I drive a taxi 14 hours a day, I don't have time to see my children. I says, why don't? Do 10 hours, do 8 hours, mm. but spend 3 or 4 hours with your children. That's more important to them than the money you bring in. Don't let this greed overtake you. You know, they say, they say who's the richest man in the world, and people come out with all these names. He's got this many billion, he's got this many billion. It actually isn't. It's actually the richest man in the world is one who's content with what Allah has given him. Alhamdulillah. Whether it's the money you have, whether it's the job you have, whether it's the partner you have, whether it's the children you have, or it's the car you drive, whatever you have, the richest person in the world who is thankful to Allah in whatever condition. You know, I was uh, reading a, a small article about the richest man uh, of his time. Yeah. So what he used to do was he says that it happened to me three times. He goes that uh, I was at the airport and as I was walking outside, I saw this guy who was selling newspapers. I didn't have enough money to buy a newspaper. So I went up to him and I said to him, you know, can I take a newspaper and pay you later on? And this guy, he was very, very poor. He basically, every penny was, was what he needed. But he says, no problem, take it. So he, he goes, it happened to be three times. And then this guy became very rich. And he goes, that same airport I landed on. And he goes, I went outside to, just to see that guy. And the person used to understand, he goes, oh, as usual, I saw him stood there selling newspapers. And he goes, now I, I am very, very rich. I could afford anything. So he goes, I went up to that guy and I goes, look, you know, I want you to, because, do you remember me? And he goes, oh, yeah, I remember you. Do you want a newspaper? He goes, no, no, no. I've got a lot of money now, so I've come to give you my money. He goes, when I gave you them newspapers, I needed that money myself. I gave it to you when I needed it myself. Allah, Allah. You are giving me this money, you don't even need it. You got so much that this money is useless to you. So that guy, the richest man, he says, I learned a lesson from this person. That when you give some money to someone and you don't need that money, it's a big deal. When you need that money yourself and then you help others, that's what you call a deal. And the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, none of you will believe until you love for you, for your brother, what you love for yourself. Allah. That takes selfishness out of a person. What I like for myself, I will like for my brother. And this is what the Sahaba Ikram did when they migrated to Medina. One Sahabi goes, Ya Rasulullah, I've got two wives. I'll divorce one of them and I'll have my brother marrying her as well. There was a beautiful um, time when, you know, after one of the battles, the Muslims became rich.
And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the muhajir that, look, you can have this money now and all the wealth that the Ansar had given you, that you can give it back to them. And you know what the beautiful companion said? They said, no, Ya Rasulullah, let them keep both. Subhan let them keep the, the wealth we've given them and give them the new wealth that's so coming to Islam. We are worried about, you know, other people taking over. You know, if I, if I tell him how to, you know, a lot of people, they say, or business secrets, you can't tell anyone. Why? Because they'll overtake you. Allah Ta'ala is, we don't even trust in Allah then, do we? You know, if someone wants to open uh, an MOT station next to my MOT station, well, my risk is Allah will give me that. Why am I worried about that for? Do you remember that famous uh, uh, kind of a story where there was a, a guy who came to a cloth trader and he was going to buy the cloth and the guy said, um, you know, don't buy it from me. Go across there. Subhanallah. And there's another shop there. And go and buy it. You get the same thing, you get it at the same price, but go to him. So he goes there, he asks for the material, he sees the material and it's the same quality, it's the same price. He gets it, buys it and he's walking off and so he realizes, why did the first guy send me there? Why didn't he sell it to me? So he went back to him and he said, look, why? Why would you send me there and not buy it yourself? He said, because I've been watching all day and I've had a lot of customers and I've alhamdulillah made enough money to keep my family happy. But I was watching that nobody had gone to him. He's got a family to feed as well. And that's why so I sent you across there. That's what you call ghame ummat This, you this, is, the, this is the this is the level that our uh, pious predecessors left for us. This was the moral, the, the character that they left for us. You know, today it's all about me and my family. No, what Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us was the bigger picture. You need to rise above this. You, know, you need to think greater. This think is Islamic. this is why Amir al Sunnah he says, you know, when you're in your little home. Yeah, you are just around your four walls, you think now everything is fine. <coughs> you just need to go out and see what's happening to the Ummah. You know, you just you need to go out and see. No, but we're not even talking about going out to other countries. In the UK, there are so many people that are living rough on the streets. How have we helped them, benefited them? There are so many Muslims who are on the street living rough. You know, as a Muslim, should we not be going and helping these people? And I've seen it, you know, when you want to have a barbecue at home. Yeah, you want to, you know, your whole family is there. You want to give a barbecue to them. But when we give to a poor person, it might be just a few pennies and pounds. Oh, yeah? wow. So that, that that just tells you that you know, well, we go to the mosque. You know, what? just imagine if uh, even in the masjid, in the masjid, you know, Molana Saab was doing a bayan and he goes, Look, you know, when you are throwing that pound in the bucket, it's making a noise. You know, masjid me awazni ani chahiye. So instead of people thinking, you know, you're not notable, you know, throw pound, they, what they did was the committee members, they put a form underneath, so that if they do throw the coins, they won't make a noise. Any people still don't understand what Imam <laughs> Sahib really meant. He meant don't throw coins in, throw pound notes in, so it doesn't make no, a but noise. In today's, you get that a lot in the mosques, yeah, and it, it kind of baffles me, because when you know today, when you give the, your children a pound, they won't take it, they'll say, you know, we want a note. And yet, when we go to the house of Allah, we are that greedy, and it is greed in the subconscious, where we'll take it all the loose change and we'll think we're doing a big deal. You know, we've got a handful of change, it might be three quid, but we're doing that, yeah? Why? Because we cannot bring our heart to actually give a note. I was up, there was a, a, a very pious man, and somebody said to him, why has Allah Zawajal created people in different forms? Because there's that great uh, hadith in Babakar, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which says, you know, if a man had two valleys of wealth, he would still wish for a third. For nothing can fill the belly of the son of Adam except for the sand of the grave. Mm -hmm. Now, there was this Buzur rahmatullahi and somebody said to him, why has Allah Zawajal created people in different forms? So, some are wealthy, some are poor, some are rich, some are ill, some are healthy, some are black, some are white. Some have more able, more skilled. Why? Why all these different conditions? And the Buzur were, were very, very clever. And what they said was, actually the secret behind it is that Allah Zawajal wants to see who in what condition is grateful to me. SubhanAllah. The one I've given wealth to, is he grateful? The one I've not given anything to, is he grateful? The one I've given health to, is he grateful? The one I've not given any health to, is ill, is he grateful? And today, the sad thing is that we have got, the, Allah has granted us the wealth, but we're ungrateful. Allah has granted us a, you know, health, and we're ungrateful. Wealth, health, all these things. And we don't appreciate these blessings of Allah 
yet we get more greedy. You know, there's a, 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 a con this year, Amir Alasana will mention in Madhuri Muzakara, sometimes people think, you know, I'm not greedy, you know, uh, I'm not like that, you know, may Allah and Raj, what you pass it, you know. Amir Alasana, he mentions that when you do put that note inside the, 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 the masjid box, yeah, is it not the, the tattered one, the screwed up one that we put in and we keep the, the new one to ourselves? That is a sign of greed. Why can't you put the best, you know, spanking new note inside the dabba? Why that crushed and creased one inside there? That just proves to you that you have that, you know, love of the wealth. And there's a very beautiful verse in the Quran. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned this as well. Inna al mu'minuna ikhwa. All Muslims are brothers. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that you know, share your wealth with other people as well. Now that you know, this is where we we, we we can talk about the money and everything else as well. Knowledge as well. You know, sometimes you. Don't don't want to what you know you don't want to pass it on to others because if you if he finds out then people will go to him and they will come to me as well so again if we look at our lives judge yourself sometimes i always think sit back this is why amir al sunnah has given us that time for horror figure think to yourself fill in your madrina math card and just ask yourself this we need to ask a question to ourselves as well how am i selfish or am i alhamdulillah azawajal, doing as much as i can for the ummah you'll get the answer well, I was, we're in this rat race, aren't we? And it's just about me and I'm the most important entity on the surface, as if the world evolves around me. And it's time to think, because this race to gain wealth, because I just, that's the reality, isn't yeah. it? That's it. You know, everybody evolves around this money. And yet, you know, Amir al Sunadal Al-Sunad al writes, and there are different books uh, which mention this, and it's a very famous book here. The guy who was from the Bani Israel and he's very, very wealthy, very wealthy, and he his du'as were always answered. So he prayed in the court of Allah Azzawajal, he was answered. Bal Ambora, Bal Ambaura, yeah. And the people came to him and they said, Why don't you, because your prayers are accepted, why don't you make du'a against Sayyidina Musa salam, the amazing, the, the superb prophet of Allah Azzawajal. And initially he wasn't up for this, but when they offered him wealth, he was rich anyway. Yeah. But when they offered him wealth, it was a greed. And what the greed did is, he became wicked because of the greed. And he made the intention to utter a blasphemy against the Prophet of Allah. And when he opened his mouth, he actually, the words came out against himself Indeed. as well. And then his tongue came out and he was destroyed. You know, it was almost, I think the glorious Quran describes him, gives an example of a qalb, a, a dog, because his tongue was out. And who was he? He was a rich, wealthy man who was successful and so successful in the court of Allah that his prayers were accepted. Indeed. And yet the greed destroyed him to the extent that he was left with nothing. And this is where we are. Where are we going? You know, the, the, the grave, the coffin, um, we, we don't have long, we only have a few minutes left, but the, the grave, I mean, you've, uh, you know, cut the coffin, does it have any pockets? No. You know, some I side some side pockets just to put, stash Not, some money in? Nothing at the moment. Just stash some gold coins in, or some gold biscuits as they do in Dubai, you know. Or, you know, in the actual grave, is there a little safe where I can take my money with me, take my car keys with me, you know? Nothing? Nothing, no. So what's going to go with me then? Nothing. Nothing at all. They talk about Sikandri Azam, don't they? That he left his hands outside the coffin that I'm taking nothing with me. But I've said, we come into this world and we know how many clothes on. When we leave, we've got three pieces of cloth. So is that it? I've spent all my life really? working and toiling and, you know, 14 hours a day and earning money and building houses and everything else and building my bank balance. And is it really three pieces of cloth I've been working for? No, no, no. You know, Allah Ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran about these successful people. I want I think we're running out of time. This last words of the Quran. And those who came after them saying, Our Lord, forgive us and our brothers who preceded us in faith and put in our hearts resentment towards those who have believed. So, you know, uh, oh, our Lord, indeed, you are kind and merciful. Yani, this is the sign of what a true Muslim that he even makes dua for his people who have passed away before him. Well, there's two things, perhaps. One is that, you know, I'm going to answer the question I kind of asked. It was a rhetorical question. We aren't only in this world to gain three pieces of cloth. 
It's much more than that because when you came into this world, you came in with a book of deeds, yeah. and that book of deeds will go with you. And how you fill it is up to you. Yeah. And I'm going to come back. Uh, it's the last thing I'm going to say is what you you said at the beginning. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam cried for this ummah. Because Akka sallallahu alaihi wasallam set the standard for what our character should be and showed us, showed us what it should be. And the question is this. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cried for us in our love. When was the last time that we cried in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or we tried to spend our lives pleasing Allah and his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm-hmm. You know the most dominant thing in our lives, views of Madhi channel, shouldn't be our desire for wealth or status in society. No. It should be the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal and what Allah and his beloved Habib think about us. Let's change our lives. Let's do something constructive. You know, 99.9% of the world is lost in this greed of wealth and status and this pride and arrogance. Let's not be of those people. Let's be of those people who for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal help others, are nice to others, beautify their character in accordance with the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, today we've talked about selfishness and how to fight this disease of the heart. Stay with us, keep watching Madani Channel. Sallu alal Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right. Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right